Elon announces, Jeff threatens, maybe, and Andrew watches and waits. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Elon Musk joined battle on Friday when he closed his purchase of Twitter and fired its executive echelon. Now he seems to have suffered a reverse, likely clashing with his habitual bet noir, Jeff Bezos of Amazon. And Andrew Torba waits in the wings, arms folded, barely restraining himself from telling Elon, I told you so. Lots to unpack here. Before I begin, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which depicts Amazon's trademark smile logo as a jack-o'-lantern. It even has the triangular jack-o'-lantern eyes. Appropriate, not only for the season, but to what Jeff Bezos has very likely done. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, the heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The Entract has finished playing, and now curtain up for Act 2 of the great Twitter drama. Now, as I told you yesterday, when Elon Musk bought Twitter, he immediately started firing executives and engineers. Many, almost all conservatives, who had lost their accounts under Twitter's old regime, rejoiced. When Elon then said that permanent bans were at an end, they all waited to get their accounts back. Before Friday was out, Elon disappointed them. Reportage comes from Editorji, MDTV, uh, that, that's NDTV, CNBC, and The Verge. To be specific, Elon Musk announced the formation of a moderation council and a moratorium on any changes in policy. I have links in the description to, one, Editorji's 40-second segment describing the so-called council, and two, Elon Musk's two tweets announcing the council. He said this new council would have widely diverse viewpoints, and he made super clear that at present the Twitter rules have not changed. Immediately, a woke denizen protested the apparent reinstatement of Kanye Ye West, following some um, overgeneralized statements he made, which I shall not describe further. In fact, Kanye West's suspension had a seven-day limit, which expired probably while Elon was walking into Twitter's San Francisco headquarters carrying a bathroom sink. In any event, the reinstatement happened automatically, according to program, and did not cross Musk's desk. Now, thus far, Laura Loomer, Lauren Witzke and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, each of whom have lost Twitter accounts and are now on Telegram, have remained silent on this latest development. So has President Trump, who praised Musk on Friday and said that Twitter was now in sane hands. But one influencer calls himself the quartering, advanced a theory that I find eminently persuasive. I've left a link to his 11-minute video in the description. Neither he nor I have the slightest proof, but per Occam's razor, this is the simplest explanation that fits all the facts. Now, you will recall that Parler abruptly fell offline in January of 2021. Parler had been on Amazon Web Services, which unceremoniously discontinued service. A month later, Parler was back, apparently on different servers. The problem is, Amazon Web Services are the hosts of Twitter. When Parler went down, most people assume Amazon took it down to protect Twitter. But Amazon had another plainer motive. 
to stifle any platform offering speech it didn't like. And now Twitter is enemy territory on two counts. First, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos have been almost spiteful rivals for years. They run competing space programs, SpaceX from Musk, Blue Origin from Bezos, and they will not cooperate even though the two programs could complement one another to great mutual advantage. Second, Jeff Bezos is woke. Everything he does, he does to promote woke precepts. Twitter was on board with that, Parler was not, so Parler had to go. Now, Elon Musk, of whom Bezos is a bitter rival, has bought Twitter precisely to make it a free speech platform. So imagine Jeff Bezos' reaction. <coughs> Nothing doing! Nor is Bezos the only one. The quartering cited Google, as in the Play Store, and Apple, the App Store, as two other companies who might sanction Twitter. Furthermore, Monsieur Thierry Breton, Internal Market Commissioner for the European Union, archly commented, quote, In Europe, the bird will fly by our rules, close quote. I have a link in the description to his tweet. And let me remind you, the European Union does not recognize freedom of speech, neither do most of its member states. Now, I'm going to discuss another piece of commentary, and I warn you, this won't be pretty. Before I do, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities that company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, about this commentary. On The Verge, commentator Nile Patel posted an obscenity-laced rant against Elon Musk. In it, he made this point that speaks volumes about Musk's ideological opposition. Here is a direct quote which I have had to valorize, if only by changing one word in it. You have to ban racism, sexism, transphobia, and all kinds of other speech that is totally legal in the United States, but reveals people to be total jerks. So you can make all the promises about free speech you want, but the dull reality is that you still have to ban a bunch of legal speech if you want to make money, unquote Nile Patel, who, by the way, lays no foundation whatsoever for his claim that big advertisers all want the woke. Nor anywhere in his rant does he define the three things he finds offensive. Therefore, one must assume that the rules of Gramscian critical theory apply. In this case, racist means white, sexist means male, and transphobic means cisgendered. Furthermore, his ideas on what the First Amendment actually means are at total variance with its letter and spirit. Unfortunately, his attitude either typifies or excuses those of the Jeff Bezos' and Thierry Bretons and other enemies of freedom. While all this is going on, Andrew Torba, head of the Gab Empire, is watching and waiting. You want to know what I think? I think he's waiting for Elon Musk to order a serving of crow. Torba told Musk back in April that he would be buying a platform with a third-party infrastructure with all that that entails. On April the 14th, he left detailed warnings. 
to which I have left a link in the description of the very problems that Musk now faces. He listed everything. Third-party infrastructure, especially by Amazon. Google and Apple disallowing the Twitter app from their stores. The need to comply with censorship laws of other countries. Well, maybe. The Twitter community itself, and if Neelay Patel is a fair example, Torba is correct. And lack of any revenue stream other than advertising. Gav has solved or worked around all these problems by building their own infrastructure, replacing phone apps with browser shortcuts, not opening company offices in censorious countries, and assiduously building many revenue streams not advertising alone. And as for communities, Gav has built its own community from scratch. The only criticisms of that community have come from those who would never join it. I am a member of the Gav social community, and I will tell you from my impartial scan that you can find any opinion on there, including many opinions Andrew Torba does not hold. He might not agree with you, but he says he'll give you a fair shake, and as God is his witness, he gives you a fair shake. The only thing you won't find on there is pornography or cruelty to animals. And I say that as one who has no relationship with Andrew Torba or Gab other than being a registered user. Torba then suggested that Elon invest $2 billion in Gab instead of the $44 billion Elon paid for Twitter. As of this moment, Andrew Torba has said nothing further, but I think you can well imagine the schadenfreude he must feel as he contemplates this latest reverse against Musk. Now, just one more thing. Yesterday evening, the Epoch Times reported that Elon Musk pledged to reinstate any account that the previous management of Twitter had suspended for minor or dubious reasons. Musk said this to Jordan Peterson's niece, Michaela, whom, when she asked about her uncle's suspension, I have a link in the description to his tweet to her. Having said that, I still cannot square that with talk of moderation councils. So, like Andrew Torva, I will watch and wait. Link in the description of the article to the segment from Ed Torji to Elon's two tweets announcing the Moderation Council and the moratorium on moderational changes, to the quarterings analysis of the situation and conclusion that Jeff Bezos poses a real or potential threat, to Thierry Breton's very real threat, to Andrew Torba's warning of April the 14th, to Elon's promise to pardon all minor or dubious infractions, and to conservative news and views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsuperlines.com as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to the quartering video, to the editorji segment, and to my t Twitter war playlist. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.